Hey gang, it's Delta here from DeltaIsGaming.com, and I wanted to show you real quick how to make money using crafting writs and also hirelings. So, if you've watched my videos before, I have a crafting writs basics, tell you how to get certified, how to get started, and basically how to do them. This is really to kind of show you the finer points in crafting writs and then also hirelings, how I make money and keep all my gear at a legendary status. So, as you can see, I'm at the character select screen. Why? I have all eight characters. I have one in each faction at least, and then I you know, have VR14s of every class type. I play this game a lot. I understand that not everyone can get that. You don't need that to make money doing this. What you need is eight characters, though. It's going to maximize your profit potential. So let me show you how. When I log in in the morning, um, I start on my top character and work my way down and basically play them all, doing the, the hirelings and the crafting writs. Usually I will log into every single one, Get the hirelings, and I'm going to show you why that's important. And then I do the crafting writs and log back into each one. This takes maybe one or two hours, and I can nab probably, I don't know, five or six Drew Wax a pop, a couple of Kudos. So if you do this every day, you can have, you know, fully mid max characters, or you can make a lot of money. So let's log into my main Deltia here. I don't even know where I logged off at last night. No, I was not drunk. I just was playing late. We downed Serpent last night. Woo! And I must have the loading screen boss. Everyone's favorite. Alright. So I'm on Deltia and Craglorn. So, ooh, what happened? What came in the mail right there? Hirelings. So, what the hirelings bring is... What I do on all my characters, and thanks to Kodog with this tip, blacksmithing, clothing, woodworking, um, I'm working on enchanting, but those are really the three. So clothing, woodworking, blacksmithing. I have every single one of my eight characters has the hireling maxed out to three. Now, that takes a lot of time, a lot of skill points. Here's how you do it. One of two ways. Way number one is that you go on your high level character and like farm an area that's high density with mobs. A good place to do this is Spell Scar and upper and lower Craghorn right here. There's tons of mobs and it basically drops like green, whites, stuff like that. What you can do is put that in your bank and have your other characters decon them. That way you level up your higher lines really fast. You only need level 32 to get the max 3 points in the higher lane. This allows you to get like the gold level gear. So, once you have that on every higher lane in three different basically locations, you're getting free mats like the rest of the game. Not only that, but it comes every 12 hours. So my buddy Kodog will set a timer when he picks up this loot and then log in before he goes to bed and basically you get two rounds of free mats all over. So, let's get this. Dwarven oil, not bad. So I didn't score anything big there. Didn't score anything big there, but that's just free income, essentially, after I get it. So that's what I do phase one, as I log into every character and do that. So, after that's done, then I like to go get the crafting hirelings. First thing you need to do is get certified in the, the basic crafting that you need to get it in. And then you have to go get the quest. So which hirelings are advantageous to do for money's sake? You can do all of them, but realistically, the clothing, woodworking, and blacksmithing don't have that high return that I see that the other ones do. So enchanting, provisioning, and alchemy all can be done at level 1. Because enchanting mats or whatever drop at any location. So you're going to get the same level of enchanting mats in Craglorn as you would in a starter island, Oridon. So you can do it on all your characters, regardless if you're max level or not. That's what I like about that. So I'm going to go to Vocal Guard, which is basically this, the main, I don't know, first area, essentially, uh, when you start questing in Oridon. I'm on the All the Merry faction. Every, basically, like, I think it's, uh, what is it, Davin's Watch and Ebonheart Pack, Daggerfall, you have the starter area where you get certified. I've already done that. Have a video separately for that. So let's, let's just assume we've already done that. But for the sake of this video, everyone can come to the starter area and get these quests. So I'm going to go get these quests. And I usually do alchemy and enchanting on every character every day. 
because I'm getting passive income via the Drew Wax. Uh, Drew Wax is the gold legendary material from clothing. And that goes for 2500 right now. And ro rosin, the woodworking, goes for three k. Tempering alloys, maybe 2500 So, you know, one round of these hirelings, I just made probably 15 20 grand. And that's every 12 hours. So, come to this, I get my crafting stuff. Now, I have the memory of a goldfish, so this is what I do. I come here, and I look at the actual mission that I need to get. So, I need a sip of ravaged stamina. I just type out and say, sip of ravaged stamina. Because I seriously will not remember this. I know it's terrible. And then natural water. Type that out. I mean, some of you probably are like, what? You can't remember this? I really cannot. Trifling glyph of health, and people probably see me typing this, like, what are you doing? Okay, so I have that typed out. That way I can just review the maps that I need. So I get the mission, I go back to the bank. And, you know, when you're doing this really fast, you can knock these out in just no time. The purpose of doing crafting writs is not to basically dump your resources and never get anything back. The purpose is one, you get 600 gold back at max level every time you complete this. So you're turning in mats for gold essentially. And then the, the main thing you're trying to get is that basically map that gives you an abundance of the material. So the more you do this, the more beneficial it will become because you're going to get back what you put in eventually. Now for clothing and uh, woodworking and blacksmithing, I don't really see the return, so I don't do it. The reason why is a stack of void stone right now probably goes for 1100 and you probably have to use 50 or 40 of it to basically you know, make the mats needed to turn it in. Plus, you, it, you get 600 for the reward, so you're looking at... you know. Maybe, maybe making up your money and getting a few pieces of ore, which I don't think is that valuable considering that I can just go farm them anyways. You're proccing the alchemy and enchanting mats because those are hard to find. That's why it's so beneficial to do that. Everyone needs alchemy mats to either sell at a profit or make your own potions for endgame. Or you don't have to be at endgame either. You can just make them from someone else and make a lot of money. Natural water. One of the tips that I found with doing this is grab four. It's going to ask you for three, but you're usually going to make a potion with that same level of water. So you'll have to come back to the bank if you don't do that that, that way, because I've done that plenty of times. The faster you get at this, the more money you can make. Split stack. I usually just go two. Like I said, I'm going to probably take, it's going to cost me one to use. Okay, so I got that. And ultimately, I came to the Starter Island, but you can actually go to a place maybe in Ralka, in Ordon, or I mean uh, in Reaper's Mark, which the the places are really close. So the bank's close to the enchanting table. The the bank the enchanting table close to the alchemy. Remember, think of every little possible thing you can do to make this faster. Because if you get it down to like one hour and a half, you can make fifty grand in two hours doing this. And that's passive income mainly, and just spending an hour or two just farming your mats. And it's fun. It's quiet. You know, I put the music on, and life's good. So I do this almost every day. Uh, you know, just, I don't know, it's just my little therapy, picking flowers and stuff. It's fun. So you go make your stuff. And we had, see, I have to write this down. I seriously can't remember this. And another tip is it really only asks you for, like, health, magicka, or stamina. So I have a trillion of these runes. And I keep most of them on a crafting alt. That way I don't have to clog my bank up with them. And it'll say complete. Okay. So while I'm making this stuff, I want to talk about, uh, I guess, how do I get the mats to even throw in here? So let me explain a couple things with the hirelings and how this all works. If you put hireling level 3 uh, in your woodworking, per se... You're going to get mats, you're going to get the basic mats based on how many points you have in woodworking. So I have one point in woodworking, but I have three in the higher lane. Why do I do that? Because you're going to get the very basic mats that you're going to need. So like sanded maple, essentially. That way every character can do it. So if you have a level 32 that's doing this, you don't want nine points in here because then you're going to have to go to Craglorn. You can't physically go to Craglorn. So it's going to be a little more challenging to do it. So I leave this at basically one except for my main crafting which is nine so that's a good little tip to do so just know that you can still have three in here 
and you're still going to get the legendary material. What matters in getting legendary material, the, the high profit yield stuff, is having three points into this. And having one into woodworking is just fine. And actually it's advantageous because it's easier to get that material. Okay, Ravage Stamina. So this is a little more complicated. I have a mod here you see, Potion Maker Extended. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, Ravage Stamina, I just kind of memorize what it is now, I think. You go over here. Let's see. I forget what it is. Oh, yeah, it's this and Stinkhorn. Oh, that's health. Well, see, it, it, it takes me a while to get this crap going. But I'm going to need that for another alt, so it's just fine. Rabid Stamina, Stinkhorn. Where's another little Rabid Stamina sign? Where are you, little Scudder? There we go. Okay, so we got our two things made. Now, the whole purpose of this is to essentially see if we proc one of the quest rewards for turning this in. And that is the map, which you can go on one location and find, like, I don't know... 15, 20 of the resources you just procured. Plus, you're also getting mats. You're getting gold back for those mats that you've turned in. 600 gold at max level. That gold amount scales on the level you have. For the more max level characters you have, like me, the better. And this inspiration leveling your alchemy scales off um, how many points you have into it. So I turned that in. That's 1,200 gold and took, what, a couple seconds? So then you go to consumables, which will be up top. So I didn't get anything. I just got this, the crappy gems and a crappy glyph. That's okay. And so I didn't get a map either, but I still got four Blessed Thistle and three Nemeros Rot. So that can make, right there, that can make weapon power potions. And that can make um, spell power. So not bad haul. And I did get this last night. Come on, tell me that's not cool looking. So that's one character down. Like like I said, I don't do the rest of the stuff because it's just not that advantageous and it takes more time than it's worth. So let's say uh, let's just go through my hirelings real quick. And they may not all be up because I did log on like about midnight last night. But I want to see what you guys what see what I get in return every day. That's my Nightblade King Poltest. So it's going to take a lot of time to farm up the skill points and to farm up the mats. And you can buy the mats on the, the auction house or whatever it's called, the guild traders, for about a 1,000 a stack. I think it takes about, I don't remember, 10,000 or so to get it all. Um, so it's going to take a bit of time. So I didn't get crap there. Nothing there. Nothing there. That was a really crappy haul. Let's just keep doing it. But remember, this is free. It takes, I think, what, 20,000 gold, I think, to invest in each character to get the max hirelings. So you have that initial cost and investment. But you reap that back within a month, just one of those characters. So if you're like me and you're going to play this game for a long time, I'm trying to mid-max every character with Legendary Gear. It just takes an enormous amount of time to do it. Or you can get these passive mats doing this, and just a little bit of dailies, and I think it's fun. So I didn't get nothing there. So I got some Elegant Lining. Th those go for 400 That's free money right there. Man, I'm striking out today. Oh, a ta! Dang it. So, okay. So I, you guys are watching the crappy, crappy version here. Well, that's another max character. Just to show you that I do have not max characters. So this is my Ebonheart guy. I recommend having one in each faction. That way you can trade with friends or do guild traders on other factions and whatnot. Stonefalls, my favorite zone in the game. God, I love it. Love Stonefalls. Little male comes. I'm striking out. Iron ore. Nothing there. Jeez. Of course, the day I go to show this, the day I don't get crap. But real quick, some of the things that are advantageous is we got f basically 10 rough maple. So, and 10 rawhide scraps and so on. Even this can turn into passive income as you, like, decon it here, refine it. 
and I got one Masic, so that's 400 gold. Over time, this this doesn't seem like a huge, like, oh my god, I inspiring thing, but over time, if you just stay disciplined and do this, like, twice a day, I know it sounds like a chore, but it's just, it's going to improve your game time, because instead of farming mats, you're going to be able to just make tons of money and then do what you want in-game. For me, like, starting off the, my game time with, like, an hour of dinking around, picking flowers, messing with my inventory, and this... This system that I have allows me to basically put in, you know, five hours a week, and then I can basically buy whatever I want. So you just have to ask yourself, you know, if you're going to play this game for a long time, I recommend maxing out these hirelings. Another one is, if you can get enchanting maxed out, it's it's hard. It's really hard to level this up and get it maxed out, but I recommend doing it. You really want the points in the extraction. For some reason, it seems like this rune extraction and the hireling kind of tie themselves together. So getting 32 in this hireling is going to take some time. But if you're looking at more kudas passively, it's good. So I use the green and the blue um, pieces to craft and decon this. As, as far as deconning goes, what you can do is get your buddy to craft it for you or get your alt to craft it for you and then put it in your bank. Don't You can't craft it for your own character and then get massive inspiration. So the best thing to do is have a buddy that has max blacksmithing Buy a whole ton of Void Steel or Void Bloom or whatever. The higher level it is, the more inspiration you'll get. Have them have them put it in your bank or trade with you and just do a massive decon party. That's going to get that up. Now, that's if you don't have max characters, if you do, just go kill stuff in Craglarn and, and find free crap. And instead of selling it, decon it. Once you get your max hirelings out, which it will take some a time and some income to do that, now you can sell all that stuff. Only I only decon blues and uh, blues and above. So this is my deconer. Uh, as you see, I, I have a, a green here, but that's just for um, research purposes. But everything else I decon is purple or blue only. Speaking of which, I'll give you another little tip here. If you want to save some skill points on your your main guys, oh, I need to take that. If you want to save some skill points. I have one alt that does all my extracting. So I maxed him out with three points here. So that way my Delta character, who's the blacksmith, only needs nine points in the metalworking. So he does the, the extracting. He also improves items uh, with the tempering expertise. So that's what I did. I did that for blacksmithing, clothing, and woodworking, which you need to take a point there. That way you save a lot of skill points. You do have crafting in your main, and you can just kind of put that out on some alt there. So I already have a bunch of stuff researched, so I'm just trying to level him up in research and that sort of thing. So that's how you can save some skill points and get some passive income. And let's just try one more character here, because I'm feeling lucky. Usually I get five Druax at least on this. Let's go to let's go to my Sork. I'm feeling my Sork. Come on. It's kind of like the lottery, like you hit a jackpot and get a bunch of gold stuff, or some days you don't. But, hey, it's passive income at this point. I'm at the hood. I mean the grot wood. I really like crafting Ritz as, a, as an inter farm of entertainment. I think it's just fun, mindless thing to go do. So if you're waiting to group up in a raid or something like that, you know, get your buddies together and go do these hirelings together. Boom, Druak, see? See? I'm going to take a screenshot of that to prove that I did get some. So right there, that's five grand. There's another little mace, that's 400, and so on. So as you can see, that's passive income. Do that twice a day, that adds up a lot. Or you can like really you know, max your characters like me. I have almost every character in purples or above, um, level four. So... You know, think about doing it. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. Come on the site. Subscribe to me on YouTube. Um, check out Tales of Tamriel podcast that I'm on every Sunday. And I appreciate you watching this video.